Alrighty, so the last talk of this session is by Jun Young Park, and it promises to take us, or part of it promises to take us beyond our senses. So I love the title. I'm interested to see how that works. Please. Thank you. Thank you very much. Hi, everybody. I'm very happy to be here. Especially, it's my first time in Prague, beautiful city, and delicious beers. <laughs> so, the title of this presentation is Daredevil, Beyond Your Senses with Dex Visualizer. Let me introduce myself quickly. I'm Jun Yong Park, a security researcher of ANNEP in South Korea. The main focus of my research is automated Moray analysis system. In recent years, I enjoy reversing and visualizing Android Moray. So, the agenda of today as follows. I will start the presentation with motivations and talk about app life cycle and app life cycle graph. Then I will introduce Devil, also known as Dex Visualizer, mainly about its construction, and I will show how to realize an app life cycle graph. Next, we will have a general idea of app life cycling. Next, in case studies, I will walk through five real world malware samples, including Downloader and Banking Trojan, RAT, Information Stealer, and also Repackaging Malware. Finally, I will conclude with some interesting points. Given the rapid growth of Android malware, the number of Android malware seen every day has overwhelmed the manpower available to analyze, classify them. The most challenging task is pick out small, unusual patterns from giant piles of binary codes. But the daily Android malware responses are apt to be repetitive and tedious hunting for a few suspicious code blocks. As the saying goes, we can see the wood for the trees. Rather than investigating a few suspicious code blocks to see the wood for trees is to figure out the app life cycle because every Android app has essential building blocks known as app components. Each component serves a distinct purpose and has a distinct life cycle that defines how that component is create, created and destroyed. Some interact with each other, some depend on each other. These relationships between the app components construct the life cycle of, app Android, of Android app. And the app life cycle is the big picture, I think. But in order to figure out the app life cycle better, we need to build the automated analysis system that can assist our intelligence. In addition, visualization in the age of automated Murray analysis can heighten the senses of our intelligence researchers. As we know, a life cycle can be visualized by various well-known graph algorithms. The visualization of objectives is one of the most effective ways to identify malware. So, prove my concept of app life cycle and the graph visualization of it. In March last year, I began to write some small scripts in Python and JavaScript. As my pilot matured, I named it Devil, as known as, also known as Dex Visualizer. And later the same year, Devil was made available to my co-workers. As you can see, Devil has a simple client server architecture. Devil Pi is running on the WSGI server configured with Flask. A user can submit APK file to the server, and then the server sends JSON responses that contains the inter-object relationships generated from text file by static analysis. On the client side, Devil.js renders the app lifecycle graph using the first directed layer 
algorithm of D3JS. As mentioned, the relationships between a components of which there are four components, co four different types of app components, you know, are the basis of app life cycle, but the four components alone are not enough to reveal the behaviors of app Android app. They can only show high level view in, in the best case, so devil uses, uses the app components only as the seed of the graph and then generate the relationship between the app components and other meaningful objects, such as intent, permission, thread, and the more. However, it is not easy job to discuss low-level technical details all at once to make our life simpler. I will take a simple, fictitious model sample and walk through the realization of app life cycle graph step by step. And before, I will show the live learning devil live server. This is uh, devil's screen. Devil has actually so many functions, but today I will show graph visualization, many, but well, this one's more. So many buttons, has many functions. This is the graph of the, our fictitious model under the test PN stealer. PN stands for phone number. This sample steals IMEI and phone number and send stolen data to specific email addresses. Okay, let's start with adding our first node to empty graph of PN stealer. Initially, app lifecycle graph has only one abstract node, EP, entry point, you know. As will be seen later, EP node plays a more important role than any others. So, it has quite a large radius and depicted in gold. Next, the intent node are added to the graph. The intent related information can be acquired by two techniques. One is reading from under the manifest file, and the other is analyzing Dalek byte code of the X file. Devil emulates Dalek byte code with the goal being traced the life of objects. Uh, see the graph. PN stealer has main and launcher intent filters. The main intent node indicates that this is main entry point and does not expect any intent data. And launcher intent node indicates this activities icon should be placed in the system apps launcher. Accordingly, the main and launcher intent node have the same color as the EP node to which the main node is connected. Next, permission nodes are added to the graph. All the permissions Android app requires must be declared in Android manifest file, but the manifest file could declare just a list of required permissions, so they will track down all the details of those permission usages by a static code analysis and type of propagation algorithm. See the graph? PN Stealer has internet and read phone state permissions. Next, a component node are added to the graph. Before the Android system can start to app component, the system must know that the component exists by reading Android manifest file. However, it is not enough to enough defend the manifest file because single DEX files are submitted, submitted as Morel samples every day. So devil extracts app component classes by passing DEX header. This is done by simply by inspecting whether a class extends or implements Android App Activity class, Android App Service class, Android Content Content Provider class, Android Content Broadcast Receiver class, and the like. See the graph? PN still has one app component name, main activity class. 
and main activity class has main and launcher intent filters and requires read phone state permission. Sorry. In Android, you should not block UI thread. If you have operations to perform not instantaneous, you do make sure you, they, they are done in separate thread. This applies to Android malware as well. This design pattern is so vital that the long running behaviors of Android malware must be implemented in separate thread. Hence, learnable component nodes are added to the graph. Devil defines learnable component class as a class extending or implementing JavaRang thread, JavaRang learnable class, Android OS async test class, and more. So, the main activity class of PN Stiller is connected to send mail thread class node, which extends async task. Next, import nodes are added to the graph. While analyzing any binary code, you know, cross-reference information is more useful than one could imagine to outline the functionality of the executables. Unfortunately, the input, import section like the information is not located in any specific section of DEX file header. We must discover import classes for ourselves. As mentioned, a component plays a significant role for the seed of graph. Therefore, devil defines import class as a class referenced by a component classes. And, and more, import class could also have its own import, import recursively. Of PN Stiller, the Gmail sender class is imported from both main activity class and the send mail thread class. And Gmail sender class requires internet permission. At last, the string node are added to the graph. So while devil emulates Darwin bytecode, the virtual string object mimicking JavaLang string, string, string builder, string buffer, etc., are maintained. Then, if the virtual string object are referenced as a parameter in the command related either at components or import, devil will generate the relationship between the text and the class in which the commands are issued. PN Stealer has two email addresses nodes issued in send mail thread class and one text node containing the keyword IMEI issued in main activity class. So this is our first and complete app life cycle graph of Android Morel. Actually, it was the first stable output of my visualization pilot, Devil. And this is learning version of graph. This is P and still learn. Let's draw graph. A little bit different different because it is latest version. My paper is just some old. Okay. So far, we have focused on how to build the graph. From now on, we'll discuss how the app lifecycle graph can be applied in detecting Android malware. Prior to seeing the real-world samples in case studies, we should have a general idea of app life cycling. The app life cycling could simply be put as traversing all outgoing nodes from one node on app life cycle graph recursively, typically from entry point. Yes, it's all about traversing a graph. I will show animation of app life cycling of PN Stiller.
But uh, as we'll see next, the app life cycling is very useful for investigating the behavior of Android app and also very effective identifying distinct behavior. Therefore, I think app life cycling could be well suited to detecting suspicious behavior of Android malware. The following walkthroughs will show some new perspectives and eventually tell a story how effectively a, a well-drawn graph could be used in finding unusual patterns and making a reasoned assumption about maliciousness. The first case study is Trojan Naru. It is clear that main activity class is the main entry point as it is connected main and launcher intent node. One outgoing edge from main activity class node points the install service class node, which means that main activity class starts the install service class and the install service class node is connected, read logs permission node. This means, you know, install service class requires the permission which allows an application to read the low-level system low files. Also, install service class node has one outgoing edge to application, VND, Android, package, archive, MIME, time node, which means that install service class has the functionality of downloading APK file. Finally, install service class node has three outgoing edge to string node, labeled EXEC, CH mode 347, package manager, install, which means that install service class executes those commands. In a nutshell, Trojan Narut requires one unusual permission, and if it starts, it downloads and installs one APK file. Above everything else, the app lifecycle graph of Trojan Narut has the complete coverage of the graph putting together all of behaviors we've seen, we can say that Trojan Naru is certainly malicious. Uh, the next case study is Kotok. This malware has some distinct characteristics, such as accessing SMS inbox, hiding app icons in the launcher, and registering device admin receiver all at the beginning. See the graph. Main activity class has two outgoing edges to string node label, the address beginning content SMS, which explains the behavior of accessing SMS inbox. And the change component enabled state permission is required by main activity class, which explains hiding of the app icon in the launch. Finally, Device admin enabled intent node has, a, has an incoming edge from main activity class node and has outgoing edge to LSAC screen class node, which requires bind device admin permission. This tells us that main activity class registers LSAC screen class as a device admin receiver. As you seen, even just a simple picture with nine nodes and eight edges or internally a list of eight inter-object relations could represent over three malicious behaviors quite well. And also, Trojan Core Talk has the main app class, extending application class. The inheritance of class, class is represented in yellow-green color. As you know well, as the context of entire application, the application class is the starting point when executing the program. Therefore, EP node and the application class node are connected to each other. And then the main app class references five receivers in total, sent G receiver, sync receiver, deliver receiver, ting receiver, and tick receiver class. At, all, uh, at the beginning, even before the main activity is created and UIs are seen by the user, Trojan Kotor calls five receivers in a stealth way and 
the five receivers also have both outgoing edge two and incoming edge from their own intent action node. Which is, means that all five receivers themselves register themselves as broadcast receiver. Clearly malicious are uh, these behaviors and the graph can make intricate story quite simple in a manner never seen before. Next case study is Trojan Bankun. This malware has interesting characteristics in that one broadcast receiver, in this case the A class on the graph, has too many intense actions. We could find this unusual feature by reading Android Manifest file and of course simply by viewing the graph. But the latter can tell the same story in a less boring and more representative ways. The sky blue color node represent the intent node actions. In this case, most of intent actions are connected to A class. Accordingly, the radius of A class node has grown to the largest of all. Furthermore, force layout algorithm naturally expands the range of A class node and its intent action node to the largest of all. Let's see. Our resolution is some low, too low. This is a class and has too many intent actions. Next case is dendroid. When there are many prevalent variants of one piece of model, we should dig out the common characteristics and then contain the whole model family as fast as fast possible. In this case, also, app life cycle graph could make our lives easier. This graph represents the infamous Trojan Dendroid family. Dendroid is a custom remote access toolkit for Android. The toolkit is being sold for 300 US dollars to anyone who wants to automate the malware distribution process. The creator promises that Morel can take pictures, record audio and video, download existing pictures, record calls, send text, and more. So, the gender family has so many functions that it leads to heavy workload for us, security researchers. With the graph, however, it takes much less time and effort to determine a sample as a dendroid variant because every dendroid variant has a large sunflower-shaped subgraph in the center. So to speak, all dendroid variants have many cross-references to their inner classes. In other words, learnable components, which implement the majority of its malicious behaviors, this characteristic gives some flower-like shape to the graph. Okay, humans tend to perceive and remember the world in images, and morale researchers are no exception. They can perceive and remember morale in images. Moreover, with a well-made visualization engine in your arsenal, it becomes much easier to identify new morale in your own senses. For instance, if you encounter new samples having subgraph very similar to that of dendroid, you can assume it is malicious and predict the malware family it might belong to. So, this one is, um, this one is dendroid, and Name have drawian service and each variant this is variant of dendroid has my service is my service 
Um, although name is changed to my service, the shape of graph is all the same. Of all types of Android Morel, identifying a piece of repackaging, repackaging Morel is more challenging than any others. In this case, also, by comparing the graph of legitimate app with that of suspicious ones, their maliciousness could be easily revealed. The graph on the left is that of legitimate app bounce ball, while the graph of right is that of repackaged one, backdoor SMS monitor. Take a closer look at, uh, at two graphs. They have the main entry point bounce ball activity class in common in green box. In addition, backdoor SMS monitor has one more graph independent of the main one in red box. On additional graph, the broadcast receiver SMS monitor class plays a role as an another entry point that receives SMS received intent and requires internet read roles, read phone states, and access fine location permissions and performs of a broadcast and also accesses phone numbers and pictures and references recording class, which requires record audio permission. Finally, SMS monitor class visit two suspicious URLs. As seen, the comparison of the two graphs easily reveals the most common functionalities and additional ones. I will conclude some interesting points. Every Android app has essential building blocks known as app components. The relationships between app components construct the app lifecycle, which can effectively be visualized in a graph using force directed layout algorithms. The app lifecycle graph is well suited to analyzing how an Android app operates. The app lifecycling traverses all outgoing nodes from one node recursively, typically from entry point, and it's useful for analyzing the behavior. And so effective in identifying a distinct behavior that can, it can be used to detect malicious behavior. And by comparing two graphs, we can also identify repackaging malware. To sum up, the proper visualization of malware as performed by devil could be a wonderful tool. It can provide insight into the behaviors of malware and can even heighten the senses of security researchers who are drowning in a deluge of rapidly increasing malware. As the saying goes, a picture is worth a thousand words. That's all. Thank you. Any questions? So thank you very so thank you very much. I think we do have time for just one question, maybe, although we are sitting right in front of a coffee break. So if anybody has something they desperately want to ask. Yeah, OK, we have one question right in the middle of the back, please. Hello. Uh, I have was one question about architecture of your tool. As I understand, uh, there is some client server architecture, yes? You use some client for send samples to ser server, yes? Uh, sorry, pardon? Yes? <laughs> uh, you have your tool, have some architecture like client server, yes? So, so I think the question is the architecture is client? and the server architecture. That's uh, yeah, yes. OK, uh, so why client server? Why it isn't only standalone tools, standalone application? Uh, why are you using uh, client and server? Why not only the one tool? Uh, yes. Uh, this is the um, our own automated model analysis system, part of. This is real system, and um, currently we, uh, we implement on the server side first, and 
verified, we deploy it to the client or one application. Okay, thanks. Okay, and I think with that, uh, this would conclude our session. I think it's up to us to thank you for an excellent talk. Thank you. Thank you.